I think it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's get into an Italian hive. We might take a peek into another hive or two. That's one thing I want to talk about in this video though is Italians versus carnies. And there's other types of bees out there around the world I know, but these are the two that are most predominant in the United States and a lot of other places as well. So let's go over here and take a peek and we'll talk about that more. This hive that we're going into is mostly Italian. And more and more I've been cycling the Italians out, going more towards carny. And there's advantages to both. Let's check into this little insulated hive. Oh, I glued it down a little bit. Look at all those bees right there. That's really nice looking. I'm gonna go and smoke them down. And that's a nice looking little cluster of bees. We are at the 20th of November. So that, that little hive looks really good. Um, I need to get it off to that location just so it's easier to mow and stuff. But it's been there all year long, been doing great. So we're gonna get into this hive right here. It's got a lot of activity. It's been requeened this year. It's got a 2020 queen. And we've got mostly carnies in this yard. The reason I've been switching over to that is because they're more frugal. For those of you who have watched my videos a lot, we deal with a lot of um, dearth periods in summer. Um, some people find that hard to believe, but we do in my area. There's just a, not a whole lot of diverse pollens. What little is coming in is not the most nutritional for the bees, nutritious. And then if it's a really dry year, a poor year, it's, it's even less so. And so I am trying to find a bee that is more sensitive and more frugal with what they have. And Italians are really known for keeping bigger populations, but also eating tons and tons of food. This is really good if you want to sell a lot of bees. This is really good if you're needing to go to almonds early in, in the, the year, like in February, to pollinate the almond trees and whatnot. But if you're an average beekeeper and you're more concerned about frugality, carnies tend to be a better option, though they're not perfect either. So let's uh, get into this hive right here. Let's just kind of check the top. All right, so there's the, the top of the hive, and you can see I've got a frame feeder in here. I leave those in throughout our winters, but we don't have very long winters compared to a lot of people. So that looks really good at the top, but, you know, heat rises, so, you know, the top can't tell you everything for sure. So let's go ahead and drop down. Let's see if they have any brood. Um, that's another thing I'm anxious to see. How much brood do we have? Because there's a very short window here in Tennessee where there's no brood. Now, on a mild year, it's really hard to get, especially on the big colonies like this. And when we do our oxalic acid vapor, we want no brood at all. Oh yeah, lots of weight. That's great. Woo! All right, so you can see all of these bees right here. There's not a ton of bees down in this bottom box though. So we might put that other one on and actually look for bees in that one. This is all just uh, empty combs, and some people are like, well, why don't you just remove this one and leave this box? Because I promise you that's where the queen's at, heat's rising, all that kind of stuff. Why do they need two boxes? Well, one, I, I see it as a way of storage, because if I have to yank a box off of every one of these, and I've got to store that, I've got to handle that, one's pulling it off, one's putting it on, protect it from mice and all that kind of stuff, wax moths. I'm not interested in that. Um, we're, we have a very short period, it's November. These bees are going to be rocking these boxes, especially a good colony like this, in February. So that's not very far away, really. Now, I accidentally crushed a bee over here, and it's very unfortunate. But look at this. Look how there's this yellow stuff coming out of its guts. That's, a, that's protein. That's, a, that's good. I've actually been seeing some pollen come in today which is surprising, no big baskets. There's a little bit of brood on the top part of this frame. So not a very, oh, my goodness, well, there's the queen right there, folks. So don't listen to anything that I say. I thought for sure, <laughs> sure she'd be in the top box, but sometimes we'll stay down for a while. She's laying, not a whole lot in here, but there's some. Got that nice blue dot. You can definitely tell she looks Italian and you can tell by this population of bees whoops that she's Italian there's a fuzzy new bee right there that's exactly what we need going into winter that one bee doesn't like me very much I don't know why I'm a really nice guy isn't that right Laurel 
What are you shaking your head no for? Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we are going to just check this frame right here. And then I'm going to check the top box and kind of see if she's laid any brood up there and she's just dropped back down in here. I don't see hardly any brood on this. She's laying a little bit, but there's a good chance that won't actually turn into anything because they'll just cannibalize it. So, you know, there's a decent bit of bees over here. Not a whole lot of foodstuffs. Just a little bit in the corners. It's amazing how much more Italian hives will eat, but yeah, there's pretty decent bee coverage on this frame right here, um, considering it's got two boxes. I would say if you added all these bees together and compressed them onto um, frames of a really nice, tight, tight cluster, I would say we're probably looking at about six frames of bees down here. That's, uh, that's nice. So let's get this queen back down here safely. And let's uh, smoke those bees down. It's looking good. Here we go again. Oh, fun every time. Woo. Ah. All right, let's check this top box and see what's happening up here. Maybe we'll have a little bit of brood. And one of the things that I see a lot with the Italian colonies is, you know, they just burn through so much resources. And it's, it's really throwing me off because most of my bees are carnies now, or very heavily influenced carny. And so when I go through a, a, a yard like this, it's probably predominantly carny by 75 to 80% now, and I have one that's almost entirely Italian, you can't feed them quite the same in my experience. The Italians just, they need more. They eat more. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll produce more in every way that you want them to. It's just, uh, they like to, to make bees. And they like to eat. What in the world? That queen's already come up here? That queen's moving like crazy. So I smoked them down specifically so that she would stay down in that frame so we won't have to worry about crushing her. And look how she's already made her way up here. Wow. Just goes to show you, they're gonna do what they wanna do sometimes. But there's a decent bit of bees up here. Look at all those nice, healthy looking bees. I haven't spotted a Varroa mite yet. I would like to see a little bit more food up in here. Not a whole lot of brood. That's good. That's really good. Well, another frame. I have to watch out on that queen. Make sure I don't crush her. All right. Well, this hive looks pretty good, except I'd like to see a little bit more food. Let's check out this other hive behind me and uh, see what's happening in it. I decided to come over here to my splits that I made in August with the Michael Palmer Queens and just show you kind of what they look like and talk a little bit more about carnies versus Italians. So we've got two right here and you can see that there's um, Michael Palmer's breeding line numbers um, on the lids. This one came from Queen 75 lines. Um, this one was 81. The lids uh, inverted. So let's uh, get into them and talk about sizes and other things. All right. So you can see these uh, double bubble things here. Look at you know how few bees there are in comparison. I, I smoked them a little bit first. Bees don't like these uh, things ripping off, let me tell you. But I can see a good bit of food down in there. Looks really nice. Let's start with the feeder. As you can see, there's not near as many bees in these hives, and they were a lot stronger a month or so ago, but they, they let their population um, go down more than the Italians do. They don't brood as late into the season. I don't know fully why the, the carnies do everything that they do. I'm not sure anybody does. And obviously, you get carnies from somebody and uh, who's been breeding them for 20 years, and then you get them from somebody else who's been breeding them for, for a while. You can get some different characteristics there. Bees are extremely diverse, even within their own uh, kind of subcategory, if you will. So over here, we got almost all food. 
those are some good healthy looking bees. I'm glad to see that they're all the way on this outer frame. Notice that there's very little yellow in these bees. There is a little bit in a few of them. Most of them are more of a dull gold and gray black. And uh, you see a couple every now and then it looks like that. Makes you wonder if it's the diversity in the queen or if it's just a couple that are straying from the other hives. I'm coming on over here and just drifting in for whatever reason. Um, probably some diversity in the lines, I'd say. You, can, you notice, again, that this doesn't have near as many bees, and I'm not concerned about that at all. One, we made these splits later, which is part of it, but since they're so carny, they just don't keep as big of a population. They don't burn through their food near as much, but they do build up well in spring, and as long as they have a good queen, a, a nice little cluster that's clean, um, doesn't have high populations of mites or any type of chalk brood or brood problems or anything like that and uh, they have good nutrition which right now they have plenty of food and hopefully we'll have a nice gentle um, ease out of winter get some nice maple pollen some dandelion and henbit and dead nettle and all that nice nice bit of bees here that's that's really what i want to see right there a lot of food stuffs Th this is really great i think this hive is going to do some great things for us coming out of winter and they get that pollen going in. We'll give them some pollen patties to smooth things out. And I'm really excited. Now, this is not a good honey yard for us. So right now, this is just kind of a holding yard. Uh, more and more as time goes on, this becomes a mating yard. It becomes a split holding yard. Um, it's definitely going the way of the dodo when it comes to honey production here. Uh, this yard's just too, too poor to keep honey production colonies over here. I'm seeing no brood so far, just food stores, food stores, and that's fine. They look healthy. And again, we're at the 20th of November. But even that Italian hive over there had very little in the way of brood, so I would say here in the next week or two would be a great time for Tennesseans to start pulling out those oxalic acid vapor units and hammering those mites into oblivion. And I'm going to do it twice on everything. I'll do it about a week apart, and I'm going to get them good. Well, I say that about the brood, and here we go. That's a nice little cluster of brood for this time of the year. Nice and uniform. Make a little bit more winter bees, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing food-wise and everything here. Oh, there's the queen right there, the little blue dot over in that direction. Some of this brood is just being capped today. Fascinating. Let's go one more frame over and see if we have any brood over there. But I've had good success with Italians. Great success, actually. But I just think overall, I'm, of course, thinking and knowing are two very different things. But I'm thinking and I think I'm starting to know that carnies are better for me just because on those stressful times of the year, they seem to weather it better than the Italians. Not that we have crazy hard winters, but we have you know, major fluctuations. Also, we have that dirt that really goes from middle of June to the middle of August. And if it's a very dry summer, then it'll go much longer and all the way into September. And I just feel again that these bees are a little bit more resilient when it comes to those things just because they're more conservative. So let's see if we have any brood on this frame of any amount. Um, not really. So they're really just focused. I'm not even seeing any eggs down in the available space. You can just see all this capped honey up here. So there's really just that little patch that is probably the size of a small salad plate on both sides of that one frame and uh, that's that's all it is so very interesting but it looks like there's bees all the way out to here and even a few on the edge if you added all this up and you put it close together we're probably looking around six or seven frames of a, a really strong six and seven frames of cluster and that's good it's been an adjustment and for those of you who are used to Italians and you go to a, a carny that is really aggressive when it comes to 
its cluster size, you're going to be kind of like, what is going on? It was definitely a big adjustment. It still is an adjustment because I, I go out to it, colonies like that, and like there's bees all over the place. All right, woohoo! And then I come over to these that are more carnies. And I'm just like, wow, they just really shrank back. Are they going to be all right? But no. This colony is in great shape. This is exactly what I want to see out of this colony right now. And I'm anxious to see this exact colony come about oh, middle of February. We're just going to leave this in here. Oh, if I can get it in. It's really tight squeeze. There we go. Anyways, if you have any questions about carnies or Italians, leave them below and maybe I'll know. I'm still thinking about it. See you in the next video.